come to present and uh, here my title today is about the hemolysis and the protective role of nitric oxide. Do you mind to go next slide? Next slide. Okay. As a background, prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass for cardiac surgery is associated with a high morbidity and mortality. Acute kidney injury is the most common complication after cardiac surgery with prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass. There are no current preventive measurements, both pharmacological and surgical strategy, showing benefits. Prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass duration is associated with hemolysis and high level of free hemoglobin. Cardiopulmonary bypass induced hemolysis causes vascular nitric oxide depletion in the plasma, which is associated with acute kidney injury. This is what we usually and generally see for who works in the uh, cardiac surgery as an anesthesiologist. Lots of uh, plasma uh, hemolyzed red cells in the blood saver and also urine uh, tinged with blood uh, in the urinary bag. In a schema here, I just want to show you the mechanisms for which nitric oxide is depleted in the endothelium. This is a vessel, and this is the wall of a vessel, from the lumen to the endothelial cells and the smooth muscle cells. Here it's a magnification of the, of the graph. As you see in blue, Nitric oxide synthetase 3, or endothelium nitric oxide synthetase, is the enzyme that produces nitric oxide uh, endogenous. So during hemolysis, red cells break in circulation and releases free hemoglobin in dimers or tetramers. These dimers usually are scavenged by haptoglobin. However, if a hemolysis is large, free hemoglobin can go through the tight junction of the endothelium and accumulates in between the space of the endothelium and the smooth muscles, causing depletion of nitric oxide endogenous by forming met hemoglobin. So oxyhemoglobin iron 2 plus is metabolized to met hemoglobin iron 3 plus and then scavenge eventually by hemopexin to the liver. And this is what happens so nitric oxide is depleted and so our hypothesis was that the prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass produces high levels of plasma ferrous oxyhemoglobin that depletes, depletes vascular nitric oxide, thereby causing vasoconstriction and malperfusion. Treatment of a patient with nitric oxide will oxidize plasma iron 2 plus oxyhemoglobin to iron 3 plus met hemoglobin, which does not bind to nitric oxide. The oxidation of plasma hemoglobin by the administration of exogenous nitric oxide will decrease the incidence of acute kidney injury by reducing plasma consumption of nitric oxide. Here it shows that the nitric oxide consumption is an assay that we can measure in the lab that measures the avidity of plasma for nitric oxide. As you can see in these graphs, increases in plasma hemoglobin, which is a free hemoglobin, increases directly nitric oxide consumption in the plasma. 
We designed a study and we selected patients undergoing surgical valve replacement requiring a cardiopulmonary bypass for more than 90 minutes in a single center. We decided to study Chinese population for two reasons. In China, cardiac surgery for multiple heart valve surgery is an increasingly common procedure due to rheumatic fever, and dialysis is very expensive for most Chinese, which means that if we save patients from dialysis, we may save them their lives, because they cannot go to dialysis. We selected these patients that are much younger than what we generally see in our cardiac surgery and have no comorbidities and they have normal endothelial function. The design of the study was a double-blind randomized trial of nitric oxide versus a standard gas mixture, oxygen-nitrogen. We administered nitric oxide at dose of 80 parts per million in the oxygenator, in the oxygenator during cardiac pulmonary bypass. And then, when the patient was outside the operating room by the ventilator for 24 hours after surgery. This is where we went, we was in Xi'an at the 4th military hospital of the People Liberation Army. And this is together with Dr. Zepol, who is my mentor. I spent there four months. They gave me a Chinese medical license. I was very proud. And I had a wonderful team of students. As you can see, it was a quite an interesting time. So this is how we administer nitric oxide through the cardiopulmonary bypass in the sweep gas. We added pure nitric oxide to the mixture of oxygen and and when the patient was disconnected to, from the cardiopulmonary bypass, we gave it uh, through the ventilator. End point of the, uh, of the study was a reduction of acute kidney injury as defined as an increase in serum creatinine by 50% within seven days after surgery and an increase in serum creatinine by 0.3 mg dl within the first two days after surgery. We calculated the sample size of the study based on the um, uh, on the literature on the Chinese population, which shows that 60-70% of patients uh, develop acute kidney injury after these procedures. So we, uh, the sample size, the total sample is to, uh, to, uh, 212 patients. We found, uh, we enrolled 112 patients in the control group and 105 in the nitric oxide group. Patients were young, 48, eight, 48 years of age in, uh, in general, more female, 60%, and the cardiopulmonary bypass time was about two hours. Of course, patients were skinny, Chinese, 22 of BMI. Euroscore is low, showing that this patient didn't have any other comorbidities. We found that Plasma hemoglobin, so the level of uh, hemolysis in both groups was similar before and of course and after cardiopulmonary bypass. Nitric oxide reduced uh, incidence of uh, acute kidney injury from 63% in the control group to 50% in the nitric oxide group. Most of these patients had acute kidney injury on stage 1, a few stage 2 and stage 3. Re renal replacement therapy, dialysis, was used in five patients, in six patients in the control group, and in three patients in the nitric oxide group. We measure plasma nitric oxide consumption by using a chemiluminescence analyzer to assess the ability of plasma iron 2 plus oxyhemoglobin to scavenge nitric oxide. And the level of nitric oxide consumption estimates the level of oxyhemoglobin in the plasma. Here we show that in the, the addition of nitric oxide to the system reduced, basically um, maintained to pre-operative level, the levels of nitric oxide consumption in the plasma. 
while instead in the control group the nitric oxide consumption went very high. Mortality at 28 days was 5% in the control group and 2% in the nitric oxide group. There were no major adverse events. So we concluded with this study that the nitric oxide administration at 80 parts per million via oxygenator and ventilator for up to 24 hours to relatively young patients with no other comorbidities other than rheumatic fever undergoing multiple cardiac valve replacements requiring prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass decrease the incidence of acute kidney injury from 63% to 50%. Administration of 80 parts per million in 24 hours was safe. Blood methemoglobin remained always below 10%. Nitric oxide administration during cardiopulmonary bypass reduced the nitric oxide consumption of plasma to low levels while decreasing acute kidney injury incidence. This finding suggests that the intervention that prevents vascular depletion of nitric oxide might be a possible target to prevent a renal injury associated with hemolysis. I presented this data uh, at the American Heart Association in 2015. We have now collected one year survival data and now we are, uh, this study is now uh, being submitted in a major journal. Now the question is, can nitric oxide prevent a cardiopulmonary bypass associated acute kidney injury even in patients with endothelial dysfunction? So patients that we are most likely to see both here in Russia or back in, uh, in the United States. The, the hypothesis is that in the normal endothelial cells on the left, there is a normal function of uh, the uh, nitric oxide synthetase, while on the right, in the endothelial with the endothelial dysfunction, which is, means uh, patients with diabetes, patients with hypertension, patients obese, that are most common to, or elderly, that are more common to come to the operating room. And my suspicion is that uh, hemolysis causes even more damage and more consumption, and so depletion, of uh, uh, the Chinese population we have seen before. Thus, we designed a study at uh, Massachusetts General Hospital, and we started this study with a prevention of renal injury by nitric oxide in prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass in patients with endothelial dysfunction. And this is uh, now a study undergoing at MGH. Now, the real reasons of hemolysis worldwide is not only extrinsic to red cells like we have seen, cardiopulmonary bypass is one. But the major one that, that is the most common is malaria, uh, which is really the major issue for a related injury of the hemolysis. So we designed a study and we conducted a study in Uganda on hinele nitric oxide as an adjunct treatment for cerebral malaria in children and we did a phase two randomized open-label clinical trial. This is a, a Lancet uh, Global Health uh, information showing that more than one million children die every year for, for uh, malaria. And most of these patients, and most of these kids, children, are in Africa. So we designed, as a background, children with cerebral malaria have high rates of mortality, mortality and neurological sequelae. Nitric oxide metabolite levels in plasma and urine are reduced in cerebral malaria. This randomized trial assessed the efficacy of inhaled nitric oxide versus nitrogen as an adjunct treatment for cerebral malaria. Patients receiving intravenous, with, with uh, also in addition to, sorry, intravenous artesunate. We hypothesized that patients treated with nitric oxide would block plasma hemoglobin vasoconstriction, improving blood flow to the brain. And here is just two minutes just to see, yes, you can start. Two minutes just to, to see this video we, we produced then when we went to Africa. 
every 15 seconds a child dies for uh, cerebral malaria. The cerebral malaria is the most severe form of malaria. So we did a study in collaboration with uh, the African Center that, um, where we sent... Uh, Dr. Caroline Navasumba, my motivating factor to work in malaria was because when I was an intern in the pediatrics department, I remember one day I had to lose over 20 children in my hands. And simply because they came with severe malaria, I will never forget that. Her name is Kovia Chohiri. She has nine kids and this is the ninth kid. She came by foot. The distance from here to her place which is 15 kilometers. She started her journey at 5 in the morning and reached here by 8 in the morning. The symptoms started on Saturday and then the mother tried to give her herbs but they couldn't work out. When she was coming, the baby was bad luck because he had high temperatures and even at the extent of a baby gasping. And so she came praying that the baby should reach her. My name is Judith Mwanga Amumpire, and I am the principal investigator of the study investigating the effect of inhaled nitric oxide in treatment of cerebral malaria in children in Uganda. If you've seen the child play and run around and happy, and then the next second the child is down. So she gets the disease, she gets a fever, she fails to eat, she vomits. Then when she gets complications, she convulses. I know that the more she convulses, the more her brain is damaged. So you know that in your mind already. So you want to stop the convulsions as soon as possible. Then when she gets cerebral malaria, she's in coma. I know that any time the brain will shut down and then she will die. So you watch her really helpless, when right? you, you watch parents helpless as it and really helpless. They can't do anything for their baby. So they leave it in your hands, yeah, to, to do your best. It's, it's, it's tormenting, okay, like a breakdown of it. My joy is to rescue this child from near death experience to life after that. You see a child is going to die in the next five minutes, and because of your small, not complicated interventions, you see the child living, and that's a joy for the team. I'm Warren Zay Paul. Our team provides a human experiment to see if we can improve the outcome of cerebral malaria in severely critically ill children. The most important thing is, do the children resolve their cerebral malaria faster? Do the parasites go away quicker? The pilot trial gives us signals as to whether it's worth doing a thousand babies, 10 centers in 10 different places in Africa. We started in October 2011 and we're about half done now, 45 of 92 babies. If this works, the next step is 1,000 babies or 1,500 babies. So, of course, my dream is to see malaria eradicated completely. But before that happens, we can't let children continue to die. We have to make sure that those who get the disease get healed completely. And also when they get better, they don't have sequelae. So they live a complete life and be useful citizens eh, to the country, to the world at large. For me, that's my dream. So we did uh, this uh, study uh, that was just uh, really a pilot, uh, pilot study to uh, understand the Do we have any question? If there is no any question, then we are going to pack our books, our belongings, and then we go home. Have you heard? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. So it was, uh, I think it was a very nice uh, experience uh, that we had uh, with uh, this group of uh, uh, physicians and what we found was that uh, seven patients in the control group and four patients in the nitric oxide group died 
five patients in the control group and six in the nitric oxide group had the neurological sequelae at hospital discharge. So, so as a conclusion of this trial, this is a really a pilot just to see a signal. Uh, we couldn't demonstrate the reduction of mortality, but there was a, definitely a trend towards uh, a better outcome. There were no neurological impairment in children treated with uh, nitric oxide. A large trial utilizing measurements of cell-free hemoglobin and maybe right heart pressures to assess pulmonary vasoconstriction would be required to learn whether breathing nitric oxide could lead to improvement survival rates in the subgroup of malaria patients. In addition, I would say that now we have finally um, made a new prototype in which it's a device that produces nitric oxide from air. So there is no need for tanks anymore. So we are designing now a trial where we can actually enroll by generations of nitric oxide from air that we already showed in the first trial at MGH, we already showed that this production of plasma generation of nitric oxide is equivalent to tanks of nitric oxide. So in conclusion, I just wanted just to thank my mentor, which is Dr. Zepo, that really taught me everything about uh, I know about nitric oxide together with uh, Luis Ignaro here the Nobel Prize for uh, nitric oxide and uh, Joseph Bonaventure who is uh, really the uh, rene renal kidney specialist that really taught me everything about uh, acute kidney injury Ryan Carroll who is uh, the director of the program in Uganda and uh, my two um, really uh, wonderful physicians from China, Lise Shong, who is the Chinese president for the Society of Anesthesia, and Lei Chong. Thank you.